Hi everyone, Creighton Webb, owner and CEO of SunWest Communications, and I'm here today with the newest member of the SunWest team. Jay Barksdale is Senior Counsel of Government Relations. Jay, really excited to have you be part of the SunWest family, and I think interesting for folks to know that you are actually the former mayor of your hometown. Tell us a little bit about your, your background and experience in government relations. Uh, yes, thank you. Well, first of all, uh, I'm very excited to join the SunWest team. Thank you for the opportunity. I am a lifelong uh, resident of North Texas and uh, have had the opportunity to work in the community on a lot of interesting projects over the years. Started out my career uh, uh, with a local congressman in his uh, district office. It gave me an opportunity to kind of learn a lot about Dallas and the surrounding areas. Uh, then I worked for Dallas Area Rapid Transit for a number of years while we were building the light rail system. Uh, here uh, in Dallas and, and worked on different uh, projects there uh, from community relations to state government relations to federal relations actually wound up uh, my time there and getting uh, seeking appropriations for the light rail system uh, in Washington and then uh, got a call from the Dallas Regional Chamber to come join them because while I was working at DART Dallas Area Rapid Transit also served as council member and mayor of my my hometown so uh, the chamber thought that was a great uh, combo combination. I had uh, experience at the local level, state level, and federal government relations. So I spent about nine years there, and then five years ago, I uh, got a call from the, a private firm to join them to represent uh, some clients there, and it's been a great, great experience. So not not your first rodeo, <laughs> no, sir. but I think a lot of people when they hear the term government relations, they they don't really know what that what that means. What kind of work? are you doing for your clients, whether they're in the public sector or private sector? Pretty much just help them navigate uh, the government process at, at various levels. And it, it could be from just introducing them to their local uh, or, or state or federal elected officials and their staff, just to kind of tell them what, what, what their company does, uh, to putting out fires or, or, or legislative, uh, dealing with legislative issues uh, in an emergency as well. Well, that's interesting. So you're not always trying to help a client pass an ordinance or pass a bill. No. In fact, <laughs> more, more often than not, we're trying to uh, amend legislation that causes them concern or, 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 or make sure it doesn't become law. Yeah. It's you okay. also said something about getting to know lawmakers. Um, I, I, I've got a little experience in, in government relations and public affairs, and it seems like uh, so many folks don't wait to call their lawmaker or get to know their elected official until they need something. Right. It always seemed to me that that's a little too late. Is that kind of the lesson you're trying that's to teach? Exactly, exactly right. And um, under the current conditions, uh, with the pandemic and everything, is really going to play a crucial role in in Austin and D.C. Uh, next spring when the lawmakers are gathering and companies and uh, advocates alike are going to have limited access to their capitals and to their lawmakers. Uh, so it's crucial to have a lot of relationships uh, to help you uh, navigate from Zoom meetings to yeah. uh, off, off capital uh, meetings as well. Here's another misnomer <clears throat> that we hear. Um, a lot of local employers who have a lot of employees, right? huge economic impact of the local area. Maybe they have, or they own a manufacturing facility and you suggest, hey, let's build a relationship with the, your elected official. And they say, no, 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 let's, let's stay below the radar. Or they say, no, I don't want to bother them. I don't want to ask a favor. Uh, what do you think about that approach? I think it would surprise company uh, leaders uh, how interested a lot of elected officials are in, in what's going on in their community. I've had many instances where I've taken uh, clients to meet with their legislator and and they've really shown a lot of interest in learning what that business does for the community uh, how many employees they have and what kind of lives uh, lifestyles they help provide for that and because and, and and also how can they be helpful uh, they'd love to be able to go back home and say I helped company XYZ achieve this or, or what have you so so truth be known inviting your local elected officials to tour your headquarters or your manufacturing facility, you may even be doing the elected official a favor. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, uh, when I worked for the local congressman, we were always looking for opportunities to get him out to, to, to tour uh, facilities uh, in the district and around town. 
So the term lobbyist <laughs> is such a, has such a, uh, not always a positive meaning, um, but, but why is that an important role for organizations? Why do they need somebody like you? Well, I, I joke around. My wife is a neonatal uh, intensive care nurse, so she, she's on this end of the spectrum of respectability, and I apparently over here, so maybe we'll even out, <laughs> but <laughs> get me into heaven. But anyway, uh, it's crucial that, 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 that you have an advocate that can help you uh, uh, understand the process uh, and, and, and guide you through it. And elected officials need lobbyists. Why? Well, they, they need to, uh, they can't be experts on every issue that they, they consider before their body. So uh, they rely on, on advocates to help them understand the issues, help them really understand what particular legislation can do and how it could have uh, unforeseen uh, impacts on other businesses uh, and so forth. So uh, it's crucial that advocates help them understand uh, the issues um, yeah. and navigate the process themselves. And we all, you know, thousands of us can't go down and convene on the Capitol or around our elected offices right now to tell our stories, whether it's a pandemic or not. Right. Yeah. So uh, speaking of a pandemic, really interesting times, just come out of a very controversial election, national election, but lots of participation, right. huge voter turnout. Many uh, biennial legislatures are convening in January. Of course, some like California are going all the time. How would you describe the political landscape that we're in right now? What observations do you have? I think it's very, very divisive, uh, uh, especially at the federal level uh, and, and in the state of Texas uh, in particular. You had a lot of money spent on trying to, to uh, build their majorities uh, and minority, you know, in, in different bodies. Um, a lot of distrust among members at this time, I think. Hopefully we can uh, can work our way through it. It's going to take a lot of good-hearted uh, communication and goodwill, but you know, I think over time we'll, we'll get better. Any predictions? As, as, far as, as how things are going to go over the next year politically on, on, on all the different levels? Uh, at the federal level, I think it's going to be, it's going to be challenging. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the House actually uh, became even closer. Democrats have a very small margin. And it's very tough to navigate yeah. and pass legislation. Any, just a few members could peel off and, and then you're not in the majority on a particular issue. I think the Senate stays in the uh, Republican hands. I, and uh, but I hope that the uh, Biden administration and the Republican leadership in the Senate can work together to, to pass some, some good things. We've got some issues to work on, for sure. How about in Texas? Uh, well, Texas is going to be interesting. We have a new uh, speaker coming into the House uh, and um, hearing good things about how he'll manage and operate the House. Uh, I was just on a Zoom call with a legislator uh, that was talking about he seemed optimistic that both sides will work together uh, in Austin better than, than we see in, in D.C. for sure. Uh, they do have some huge uh, budget uh, issues that they're going to have to deal with in Austin uh, and uh, some other issues like education and uh, redistricting, which is always popular. Yeah. All right. So before I let you go, last question. Um, uh, really pleased to have you here for many reasons, but another reason is the fact that uh, your daughter, Caroline Barksdale, is part of the SunWest team as well and has been working with government relations clients even before you came on. What's it going to be like to, <laughs> to work with your daughter? What do you think about that? Well, I, I'm excited about it. I, I hope she is. Uh, hopefully I can, uh, you know, we've talked about government affairs and politics uh, her whole life, so she's had a real interest in it. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun watching her progress through college and, and start her career. And she certainly enjoys working here. I'm looking forward to being with her. Good. Well, we're glad to have you here, too. Thank you. Jay Barksdale, or as I like to say, the Honorable Jay Barksdale, <laughs> newest member of the SunWest Communications team. Thanks so much. Appreciate your time. Look forward to working with you. And thank you for joining us. If we can ever be of service, check us out at sunwestpr.com, and we'll see you next time.